This video is brought to you by Sayorite. Visit Sayorite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to make patio pillows. These patio pillows will be made from a premium fabric called Sunbrella Upholstery Fabric that's available from Sayorite. These outdoor pillows will not easily fade. Last season, I went out and I bought a patio set from a big box store, and they started to fade after two to three months. I started looking for other solutions and I decided that I was going to reupholster the pillows with Sailrite Sombrello upholstery fabric that has a five year warranty, it's going to last a lot longer. Using our old pillow, we'll first start with patterning. The first step is going to be cutting open the seam to expose the inside of the pillow. And to do this, you want to use something like scissors, thread nippers, or a seam ripper. Right here I'm going to be using thread nippers to cut the thread and make sure I'm not cutting the actual fabric that we're going to be used for the panels. And I'm slowly going to cut each piece of the thread and rip open the seam so we expose the inside and get our patterning we're going to use for a future step. And I'm going to do this all the way around the entire pillow until it's all the way apart. So once the seams are cut open, we're going to take the button, we're going to cut the thread, which will loosen up the batting and the fiber fill on the inside of the pillow. As you can see, the batting and the fiber fill are in pretty good shape, so we're gonna use it for our final application. If your batting and fiber fill was starting to mold and mildew, turn yellow or deteriorate, then you would wanna replace it. Looking at one of these panels, the original color was this nice dark gray, and as it was left in the sun for two months, it started to turn to this ugly brown faded color. We're gonna use the old panel as our pattern to create the new panels. And we're just going to put it on top of our fabric and use an acrylic ruler to get a rough outline of the size for the new panel. The problem with buying those outdoor pillows from a big box store is that they fade easily. That will not be the case when using a premium fabric from Sailrite. And to keep the panel from moving around, I'm going to use a sandbag to make sure it's held in place. And I'm going to continue to trace around the perimeter of the old pattern until I have a finished pattern. You could also measure each side of the pillow or the panel and make your pattern that way. After you finish tracing your panel, we're going to use the Sailrite Edge Hot Knife and the Tempered Cutting Glass to cut them out. And when you cut upholstery fabric with the Sailrite Edge Hot Knife, it makes sure that the edges don't unravel and it just makes it a lot easier to sew the finished application. We're going to use our first panel to recreate a second panel. And when you do this, you want to make sure that the direction of the fabric is matching. So as you can see on this fabric, we have a white thread going along the width of the fabric. And when we put our panel down to trace it, we want to make sure that it matches the bottom of the fabric. And this is especially important when you're using a striped fabric or anything with a pattern. If your fabric is a perfect square or a solid color, it doesn't really matter the orientation or the direction of the fabric when you're patterning. You just want to make sure that you use the material wisely and you're not wasting any material. So we're going to trace around the perimeter and then cut it out with a hot knife again to get our two panels. Choosing a high quality piping is as important as choosing a high quality fabric. Piping is next. When we apply the Sombrella Decorative Trim, we want to make sure that the trim is facing towards the inside of the panel. So we want our panel facing up, trim facing towards the middle, and we're going to baste it around the entire perimeter before we sew. When we start basting, we're going to leave about three to four inches of a tail so we can overlap the piping when we're done sewing it onto the application. This double-sided tape will help to hold the piping in place as we take it to the sewing machine and sew it onto our plate. So once we have our basting tape started, we're going to peel off the back sticker. And we're going to start at about the middle on one side. And baste it right on the edge. Where Tanner is basting the piping, it will overlay itself when the piping comes around. It'll be called the piping joint. This should be the bottom edge of the pillow. 
and you'll notice that there's still about a three to four inch tail that's going to be perfect so when we baste the trim around the entire perimeter of the panel and come back we're going to have another tail about three to four inches coming off this way and we're going to be able to sew over cut these pieces off and it's going to give us a professional finish here's a look ahead at what tanner's talking about those are the two ends of the piping overlaying each other after it's sewn so when you get to the corner of your panel you want to make sure that your trim turns the corner nicely and it's hard to do without cutting a slit so we're just going to cut a small slit right before the edge and when we continue to baste it down it's going to be much easier to take that turn that slit was only made in the piping's flange. We did not cut through the piping. When you get to where you started, you're just going to baste it down. And again, we want to have about three inches overlapping. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut that right now. And when we sew, we're going to have overlapping trim, but it's going to look perfectly normal on a pillow and give us a professional result. The Ultrafeed LS1 has a standard presser foot with a cording tunnel and it will sew piping up to a quarter inch. We're going to put our presser foot down, hold our threads in place and start sewing. Once we start sewing we want to lock it in place. And continue to sew around the perimeter of our application. This Sayerite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine is set up in the Ultrafeed sewing table in Workhorse Servo Motor Package. When we get to the edge, we're going to make sure our needle is in the downwards position. We're going to raise our presser foot. drop our presser foot and continue to sew. We'll continue to sew around the perimeter in the same manner, being sure to keep the piping underneath the cording tunnel of the presser foot as we sew. Again, the Sayerite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine is being used in the Sayerite Ultrafeed sewing table with the workhorse servo motor, which gives us optimal slow speed control and also a great working surface. Now we've sewn all the way around the perimeter to where the two ends of the piping intersect. Watch what we do next. So when we come to the end, we're going to be sewing over both ends of the piping. And we want to make sure that when we go over, we go over pretty slow. And once we finish, we're going to lock our stitch in place. And you want to make sure that the tail ends are facing out like so. You may notice that he's sewing away from the piping and deeper into the piping's flange, but that's no big deal. This will be the inside of the pillow, so reversing can be done there and no one will see it. So once you have the trim sewn onto the perimeter, we're just going to take the tail ends and we're going to cut them. Tanner cuts that acrylic piping with scissors, but it can also be done with a hot knife. Though it doesn't look good now, when we turn our pillow right side out and the other plate is sewn to it, it'll look great. We'll show you that later on. Now we'll sew the second plate in place. Here is a look ahead at our almost finished pillow. And you'll notice we need a hole so that we can insert our stuffing inside the pillow cover. So in this chapter, we're going to sew the second plate to that first plate that has the piping around the perimeter. Where we start sewing will be where the access hole is to stuff our pillow. And we want that side to be on the side where the piping joint overlays itself. So once we have the piping sewn on to one of our panels, we're going to take the second panel and we're going to have the top side facing down towards the top side of this panel. So both sides, the outsides of the pillow should be facing each other. And we're going to sew them together. And when I start sewing, I'm going to start on one side about four to five inches um, from the top. And then when I sew around the entire perimeter, I'm going to stop four to five inches from the other side and it's going to give us enough room to put in our fiber fill and our batting.
And when you start again, you want to make sure that you lock your stitches in place. And then you want to make sure when you're sewing these panels together that they align as evenly as possible. And you're following the piping with the cording foot. And again, once you get to a corner, you want to bury the needle, raise the presser foot, and continue sewing. Let's go ahead and skip ahead here and show working on the very last corner. Drop the presser foot, and we're only going to sew again about four to five inches up. Tanner is referring to the opening where we can insert the pillow insert, so he's going to stop about four to five inches in from this corner and do some reversing. And we're going to lock our stitch in place. Reversing here is very important because we will put stress on that seam when we insert the stuffing. And then cut the thread. So this space between where we finished and where we started will give us enough room to put back in the batting and the fiber fill that we took out when it's right side out. And we're going to turn it right side out. And when you do this, you just want to make sure that the corners are pushed all the way out. We will repurpose the stuffing that was in the old pillow. But if you need new stuffing, we have it at Sarah. Check it out. So we're working with our batting and our fiber fill again. And what we're going to do is use foam lock spray and spray it onto our fiber fill and attach it to our batting. So when people are using the pillow, the fiber fill doesn't sink to the bottom. We put down a piece of cardboard for overspray and we're going to spray it on both surfaces. The original pillow from a box store that faded quickly had an upholstered button form in the middle to help hold the batting in place. This glue will do the same thing except for probably do it better. After you've waited a few minutes for the adhesive to tack, we're going to put the batting over the fiber fill again and we're going to do the same for the other side. And as you notice the fiber fill, there's no way for it to possibly slip or fall down on the pillow. Now we can fill the patio cover with the stuffing and sew it shut. That's next. There's really no standard or easy way to get your filling back into your cover. So we're just going to put in a corner and start filling it as best as we can to make sure that it's distributed evenly. As you can see, the polyester batting forms kind of like a taco shell around the fiber fill. So one thing to do, we recommend, is to stuff the bottom edge of the polyester batting, in other words, the rolled bottom edge, into the uh, decorative pillow cover first. And then stuff the rest of the stuffing inside as carefully and as neatly as you possibly can. And once you get it in, you just want to adjust it to make sure that it fits how it's supposed to and the fiber fill is tucked between the batting still. Okay, when you're closing the opening of the pillow, you want to make sure that the raw edge is folded over so it gives it a nice clean look. And we're going to put clips on our fabric here, close the edge, and then we're going to sew it shut. At the opening of this pillow, to give it a finished look, we're going to create a half inch hem. We'll use Wonder Clips to hold the half inch hem and the other side of the plate together, but you could use multi use pins instead. We'll continue to hem and clip or pin our opening together. Then, when we're satisfied, we'll take it over to the sewing machine and sew it shut. We'll show you that next. So for this part, we're using the left roping zipper foot so we can sew as close to the piping as possible when we're sewing this part shut. When we start, we want to lock our thread. 
We want to sew as close as possible to our decorative piping, but yet still sew through the half inch hem. We want to remove the wonder clips or the multi-use pins as we come upon them and continue to sew until the pillow opening is closed up and everything looks great. We're coming up to where we cross the piping over itself. Here there is a bit of a transitional bump, so you do have to take your time. But uh, as you can see, the Sayrite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine did a phenomenal job of crossing over the piping at that middle position. And now our outdoor patio pillow with premium fabric from Sayrite is now complete. And we also repurposed the stuffing that was inside of the old pillow, which is only two months old. This shows how to make the patio pillow for the backrest, but what about the cushions we sit on? The cushions for this chair are made following the easy box cushion approach. Click the link at the top if you'd like to see a video of how to accomplish this job. Visit the Sayrite website for high quality premium outdoor fabrics that'll last for years. We also have the tools that you need to make your own pillows and cushions. Check it out. Coming up next is a materials list and the tools that we use to make this patio pillow. If you have questions about what fabric to choose, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. Here's a look at our finished patio. It looks great. We also show a four-sided sail shade. We have a video tutorial coming soon showing how to do that. Be looking for it at the Sayrite website or at the Sayrite YouTube channel. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.